Good evening. Sorry, we're starting just a few minutes late. The time is 730. I will call this public hearing and regular business meeting of the mayor and council for the city of Snellville, Georgia, Monday, February 24th, 2020 to order. And we'll start with the invocation uh, by our economic development manager, Eric Van Ottern. Let us pray. Father, as we come to you in this place and time, Father, we consider your wisdom and ask it to be given to us. Father, as we seek your guidance and leadership in all the things that we do in this place, it's your wisdom, Lord, that we seek for the better of, you know, of your people and the things that go here, Lord. We ask that you're with us and guide us in this day. Amen. Thank you, Eric. And next we have Boy Scout Troop 65, who will lead us in the pledge. Scoutmaster is Todd Hendricks. Senior Patrol Leader is Matthew Mitchell. Very well done, Pack 65. We appreciate your being here, or Troop 65. Next, we have a couple of things under our ceremonial matters. We'd first like to present um, Christy Linsky, our council member Christy Linsky, and Gretchen Schultz with the Georgia Municipal Association Certificate of Recognition um, for their the education hours that they've earned since they've been um, on the city council. So. If y'all want to come down and we'll do that and take some pictures. Okay, next I'll be administering the oath of office to Ann Seacrest for Planning Commission Post 4. I am secret. 
Do you solemnly swear or affirm? Do you solemnly swear or affirm? That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of Georgia. The Constitution of the State of Georgia. And the Charter and Ordinances of the City of Snellville. And the Charter and Ordinances of the City of Snellville. And that I will, to the best of my ability, and that I will, to the best of my ability, faithfully perform the duties of the Planning Commission. Faithfully perform the duties of the Planning Commission during my continuance therein. During my continuance therein. So help me God. So help me God. a good signature. Maybe. You should have a good signature. By Actually, too. I should have, but thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate your joining us. So we welcome Ann Seacrest to the Planning Commission. Next, we'll approve the minutes. Is there a motion? Motion approve the minutes of the February 10th, 2020 meeting. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor, please raise your right hand. That is five in favor. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Solange? She's a Are you going to vote? Yes. She's a yes. <laughs> I didn't see a hand, but she's a yes. Uh, we have no invited guests. We have several uh, committee or department reports. We'll start with a census report by Council Member Solange Destang. Hey, good evening, everyone. The census season is upon us, and I just want to give you quickly the 101 on the census. Um, the census data are actually being used all around us. They're being used in different ways. For example, um, the residents use the, the census to support community initiatives um, involving legislation. Also businesses, they use the census as well. Um, they use the data to decide where to build factories, offices, and stores, which actually create jobs for the citizens. Um, local governments, they use the census for public safety and emergency preparedness. Even real estate um, companies or developers, they use the census to build new homes and revitalize the old neighborhoods. Okay? So your privacy is protected, because a lot of people always ask, okay, if I take the census or if I fill out the form, what will happen with my information? Your information is protected 100%. It's actually against the law for the Census Bureau to publicly release your information. Um, and all they actually want to do is just, you know, get the identity um, of each person in your household. Um, this year, actually, the 2020 census will be a little bit easier. Everything will be done online, and everybody counts, okay? The census counts every person living in the U.S. Um, only one time, depending on where you are. They'll count you only one time. It's actually, it's actually about fair representation. So every 10 years, the results of the census are used to reapportion the House of Representatives, determining how many seats each state gets. So it involves a lot with the census. It's not just filling up a form, it's a lot involved. Um, actually, the census started in 1790, um, and it's actually written in the Constitution for them to take the census every 10 years. So a lot of money involved as well in the census. The distribution of more than $675 billion in federal funds, grants, and support to states 
counties and communities are based on the census data. The money is spent on schools, hospitals, roads, public works, and other vital programs. So taking part actually in the census, um, um, to take part of the census is actually your civic duty to do so. Um, completing the cens census is mandatory, and it's a way to participate in our democracy and say, yes, we count, okay? You count, I count, we all count once we take the census. And I'm thinking, Erica, that we have a short little video that I want to share with you. Beginning in March, the U.S. Census Bureau will invite households across the country to participate in the 2020 Census. But what is the Census? Simply put, the Census is a headcount of every person living in the United States. To be sure the government represents the people, the U.S. Constitution requires a population count every 10 years. Ever since 1790, the Census has determined the number of seats each state receives in the U.S. House of Representatives. It is, and always has been, a cornerstone of our democracy. We still use it to determine representation, but leaders also use the data to make decisions. Your response helps guide planning for the future of our communities. The 2020 Census will help inform decisions on how billions of dollars are allocated annually for critical public services like roads, schools, hospitals and health care clinics, fire and emergency response services, and hundreds of other programs. In 2020, for the first time, you'll be able to complete the census online, by phone, or by mail. It asks a few simple questions, like how many people live in your home on April 1st, including their age and sex, and if there are any children living there. You should know that by law, all census responses are completely confidential and your personal information cannot be shared with any law enforcement agencies. Every person counts, no matter who you are or where you live. So whether your family has participated for decades or the 2020 census will be your first, we all have a role in shaping the future of our country. Okay, and I hope this information has helped um, just to start opening up the way um, to have discussions about the census. Um, also, there will be some extra information on the census. There are some flyers that are located in the back of the chamber, and there is also some information that's being placed in the hallway. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Council Member Destang. And also, you know, just to add the local note, to this when Solange talked about funding um, it's a very real thing that we deal with especially well not especially not only in Gwinnett County but all across the state but in Gwinnett County we have 16 cities in the county and there are revenues that are shared between the county and this the cities and a lot of those revenues are based the the portion that Snellville gets are based on our population so if other cities um, or the county are very successful in counting and Snellville does not get a complete count, our numbers are going to flip around a little bit and it, it will affect how much that we get funded for things like sales tax, um, our 911 revenues and, and things like that. So there's a lot of um, revenue out there that gets shared according to population. So it is a really, really important um, thing here for the uh, city of Snellville as well. Next, we have an update from our Parks and Rec Advisory Board, uh, Brittany Marmel. I thought I saw you come in. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I have a very short report. We have received updates about our spring leads. They are starting they're recruiting for people to play in the different leads and also got an update on snellville days and as always they are looking for volunteers to participate and help out on the first weekend of may for snellville days the shifts are no longer than three hours so if you know anyone or you want to participate uh, get in contact with lisa platt 
and she'll sign you up. That's it. Thank you, Brittany. Good to see you. Anyone have any questions for Brittany? Thank you. And next we'll have an update from Snellville Tourism and Trade, Kelly McAloon. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I also have a very short report. Um, I just wanted to remind everybody that Snellville Tourism and Trade does meet the third Monday of every month here at City Hall. This is an open meeting to the public, so we encourage and invite folks to come, listen to what we're about, what we do. Uh, was it last Thursday? I think we had business after I was at the Hampton Inn, extremely successful event. We had over 100 people there, and they were from everywhere. Um, not only from this area, I think we talked to several people that had businesses here in Snellville that were on the line, the border of Snellville, Loganville, Snellville, Lawrenceville, that we had no idea they even existed here. So it was just, it was very neat to just have that many people there talking and networking among the ones who did come from like outside of Gwinnett County. So it was a neat thing. And we are also having a volunteer, a general volunteer meeting on March 24th here at City Hall at 6 p.m. So we encourage all those to come out, know about all the events we're having on the Snellville Town Green, and to join us as a volunteer this year. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Kelly. And now we'll move to the approval of the agenda. Is there a motion? Motion to approve tonight's agenda with one addition under new business, adding item F, consideration and action on the restrictive covenant for the property, property located at 1632 Fars Road, parcel number R5072091. There's a motion to approve the agenda with the one addition. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor, raise your hand. That is six in favor and none opposed. We have no public hearing tonight, so we, will, we do have several items under our consent agenda. I'll read the items and then we'll have a vote. We have item A, approval of a one-year lease with Gwinnett Technical College for use of City Hall classrooms. And item B, approval of a one-year lease with Gwinnett Eastside Chamber, for, uh, Chamber of Commerce for use of City Hall classrooms. All in favor of the consent agenda, please raise your hand. That is six in favor and none opposed. There is no old business. We have several items under new business. Item A, consideration and action on resolution 2020-02, supporting legislation for the Georgia Local Government Infrastructure Finance Authority Act. Is there a motion? Uh, motion to approve resolution 2020-02, as described by Mayor Bender. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Would any members of council like to talk about this? Would you like to read it? <laughs> huh? Do you want? I can read it. Supporting. What this resolution is doing, um, the Georgia legislature is in session. And we always get worried when they're in session because they like to change laws. And some of the laws are good and positive changes, and some don't impact cities very well. So tonight, and we actually have another one on the agenda as well. This one happens to be a good thing, and we want to show our support for um, for this uh, Georgia Local Government Infrastructure Finance Authority Act. It's a mouthful. Whereas locally elected officials work in partnership with citizens, the state of Georgia, and the federal government to address ongoing funding needs for infrastructure projects and other capital investments, which are crucial to maintaining safe communities and impact economic development efforts, 
Georgia cities have $11.2 billion of capital needs between now and the year of 2022, with the greatest needs being infrastructure, public safety, and government buildings. And whereas taxpayers consist consistently continue to invest local dollars by supporting special purpose local option sales tax, or SPLOST, and transportation special purpose local option sales tax TSPLOS referendums. Whereas tax increases alone will not be sufficient to address all outstanding projects, state legislation to establish a local government finance authority would provide a lower cost efficient source for municipal and county governments to fund various projects and equipment needs. And whereas an authority could be operated by both Georgia Municipal Association and Association of County Commissioners of Georgia to issue tax-exempt bonds to local government for financing of goods, real and personal property, structures, and supplies. And whereas such financing would be through revenue bonds pursuant to intergovernmental contracts. And whereas municipalities are currently authorized under Georgia law to participate in lease purchase financing, it is more expensive relative to other governmental financing options. And whereas changing state law to provide municipalities and counties a more efficient funding source through the issuance of a pooled revenue bonds by local government finance authority will reduce the overall capital spending, costs of capital spending and save Georgia taxpayers dollars. So what, what this program would do would be allow uh, these two Georgia uh, associations, one an association of all the Georgia cities and the other association uh, for all of Georgia's counties, it would allow them to pool funds and then be able to use those funds for uh, cities to lease um, purchases. Uh, we did it here with, with bonds similar for the um, for the city hall building when it was built. Um, we used a funding source like this. Not all cities are big enough or have the, the bond rating that they need to be able to issue their own bonds. And so having a funding source where they can get lower cost money to purchase their capital items would be helpful. So with that explanation, <laughs> really long explanation, is there a motion? Or do we already have a motion? We have a motion and a second. So all in favor, please raise your right hand. That is six in favor and none opposed. Get this rolling down. We'll start it on that end first. Next we have item B, consideration and action on nuisance abatement of 2498. Main Street East. There was a typo on the agenda. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council. Uh, we're here before you tonight uh, to declare the property at 2498 uh, Main Street East a nuisance, as you guys are probably aware. It's the old stone house on Main Street that's next to Brand Bank or Crystal or in that general area that you can see off the um, highway there at 78. It's burned down more than 18 months ago. Uh, unfortunately, the executor uh, of the estate has noted that they don't have the money to perform the demolition and that um, they won't have the money in the foreseeable future unless the property sells, at which point it's not their responsibility anymore. But in an abundance of caution, we feel like it uh, should be cleaned up sooner rather than later and um, be demoed and made safe. Uh, for anyone in the area. So we would ask that you would allow us to declare it a nuisance and allow the city attorney to move forward in the nuisance abatement process. Are there any, Are there any questions of counsel for Mr. Thompson? If you just clarify for the, for the folks, Jason, that will then place a lien on the property? That's correct. The city will um, place a tax lien basically higher than a tax lien actually that will be cured once the property is uh, before it can be transferred so we'll receive our money once the property is sold any other questions with that is there a motion motion to declare a nuisance abatement action on 2498 main street east there's a motion is there a second second, second. 
Who did I get? Ladies. All right. Seconded by Destang. All in favor, please raise your right hand. That is six in favor and none opposed. Now we'll have item C, consideration and action on resolution 2020-03, opposing House Bill 302 and Senate Bill 172, preemption of local building design standards. Now this again goes along with what the legislature is proposing, and I'm not gonna read this whole, whole uh, resolution here, but the city of Snellville is against these two bills that are floating around the house. They were there last year and I think the year before. What these bills propose is that cities and counties will no longer be able to set the design criteria for buildings and structures in their um, municipalities. Um, this would mean that we, we can't um, regulate you know, housing materials, and, and uh, so any builder could come in and build whatever they wanted to. If your subdivision was completely built out except for a couple of lots, anyone could come in and build on those empty lots without worrying about any neighborhood covenants or any other design standards that the city has, and they could put up whatever they would like, and we would have no control over that. Um, so we are very much opposed to this. Um, and would appreciate the, the, um, the state to allow the cities and the counties to continue to exert local control over these things. It's our local citizens that make these decisions. It's not just the, the five or six of us up here. Um, and it's sad if we would lose that ability. So with that explanation, is there a motion? Motion to approve resolution 2020-03 as described by the mayor. There is a motion. Is there a second? Second. Se so motion and a second. Did any other council members like to opine? I would. Uh, this came up last year as a property rights issue. This year they're trying to sell it as an affordable housing issue. It is in fact neither. It's the ability for builders to build low quality houses and uh, literally you could have the house next door become a warehouse you'd have flat roof concrete walls so it has major impact on the value of the surrounding properties there's a reason we need to have it die a very timely death um madam mayor if i might add um one of the wonderful things we have here in georgia are some some cities like helen georgia or avondale estates that have a feel, a look when you go to them. Um, Helen is, is kind of a barbarian community. Well, Helen would no longer be able to... Bar barbarian? Barbarian. Well, the, bar the barbarians used to be barbarians. Todd Warner, he'll be here all week. <laughs> and I'm the one who doesn't drink. Um, now I've lost my train of thought. Um, but but we, we've been working hard for the last 10 years to have a town center. And one of the things we want to do is have a certain look and feel. And we want that to be cohesive. So it looks pretty much not the same, but of the same theme throughout our downtown area. This legislation would not allow us to do that. It would not allow us to have that control anymore. It would be in the total hands of the developers. And if they wanted to come in and put a tar paper shack, if that's allowed under national building code, they'd be allowed to. We would not be able to stop them. So although we're passing this resolution, please feel free to contact your legislators and let them know that you do not support these, these uh, bills because quite frankly, we have a voice, but your voice is stronger. Thank you. Absolutely. I echo that sentiment. If all of you could write, call, email your senators, your House representatives, um, 
it would it goes a long way if they know the community is not in support of this and as council member or mayor pro tem emmanuel alluded it's not a property rights issue this is a push by the vinyl siding industry and the home builders association to be able to come in and do what they please here in the state and in our communities so this is all about um, these businesses making money these industries so um, we hope that you'll help stand with us to be against this with that is there a motion uh, we had a motion in a second <laughs> golly all in favor please raise your right hand that is six in favor and none opposed not following my checklist here next we have item d consideration and action on resolution 2020-04 approval of the service delivery strategy agreement and authorization for the mayor and city attorney to execute the documents um, just a brief explanation of what we're doing here every 10 years the state uh, requires the counties and the cities within it to come to an agreement on who's delivering what services what those who where the funding sources come from for those services and to make sure we're not dupl duplicating services or making sure that we're not collecting taxes on a service that we're not paying for or we're not getting um, so we are in the process of this agreement uh, we've been working with the county since last summer to work out the service delivery strategy uh, between the 16 cities and Gwinnett County. We are this close to having it done, um, and we should be able to finalize. We've got one final uh, document that we're just trying to get the couple little details worked out, which we should have within the next day or two. Uh, we do have a deadline of the end of February to get this done and into the uh, DCA. So what we're asking for the, the council to do is to approve um, or to authorize me and our city attorney to sign off on the documents when we have that final one complete because we're not expecting any sub substantive changes uh, to it. So with that explanation, is there a motion? motion to approve the service delivery strategy agreement and authorize the mayor and the city attorney to execute the documents there's a motion is there a second second there's a motion in a second any of the council members wish to add a comment seeing that did you want um i just want to point out that in gwinnett county we have a group that's called the Gwinnett Municipal Association, and our esteemed mayor was the president of that organization over the last year. And she has worked on the behalf, not only of Snellville, but all the cities in the county in order to make sure that we have fair and equitable treatment um, as far as the, the way we're taxed. And I just wanna thank you for that hard work and make sure you're acknowledged for it. Thank you, Todd. And with that, all in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. That is six in favor and none opposed. Now we'll have item E, consideration and action on Summit Chase sign easement. Someone wanna talk about this? So the city was contacted by the Summit Chase Homeowners Association uh, regarding wanting to update their sign and also some of the landscaping uh, at Scenic Drive Southwest. That's the, uh, I won't say the main entrance, but Summit the, the Chase. Summit Chase Drive. Summit Chase Drive. Summit Chase Drive. Sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's correct. There are no barbarians there. <laughs> so when we when the city went to do that, it was learned that there was no recorded easement where that sign and landscaping was. Uh, however, it's clear because there is a an island that runs almost from 78 about 450 feet down uh, where that landscaping is and in fact the road is bisected on either side 
Uh, when the city uh, took dedication of those roads to be city roads, that was there and existed. So it was evident that there was an intention of the city to accept and to have that easement there. So what we're simply doing tonight is we are acknowledging the existence of that easement so that the uh, Summit Chase Homeowner Association can maintain that and uh, apply uh, pursuant to the, the applicable codes and ordinances of Snellville uh, to have their sign updated. Thank you, Mr. Ross. Is there a motion? Motion to approve the consideration and action of the Summit Chase sign easement. There's a motion to approve the easement. Is there a second? Second. second. Oh, y'all. We'll give that one to Dave. We gave the last one to Solange. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please raise your right hand. That is six in favor and none opposed. And now we'll have new item F, which I don't have the title in front of me. Does anyone have that? We'll let uh, Councilwoman Linsky is going to read the header on that one. It was consideration and action on restrictive covenant for the 1632 Fars Road property. Yeah. So that property is uh, currently owned by the city of Snellville, although I don't believe the city wants to continue to own that property. Uh, it has a penchant for being flooded, and unfortunately uh, the city has uh, taken possession of it two different times in the past. Uh, there has been some interest uh, in some other people purchasing uh, that property, uh, which will have to be done through a public auction uh, or a closed bid sale. Uh, but in doing so, the city does not want to have to buy that property back again when it floods, and it most likely will flood again. Uh, so to that end, we are adding a restrictive covenant that precludes any structures from being built on that property, uh, and that will be on the record, so any purchasers going forward will be well aware of the flooding potential and the fact they cannot build anything on that property. Thank you, Mr. Ross. Is there a motion? Motion to approve the restrictive covenant for property located at 1632 Fars Road. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. So motion and a second. All in favor, please raise your right hand. That is six in favor and none opposed. We made it through our business. Now we'll move into council reports. We'll start with Councilwoman DeStang. Okay, just wanted to bring um, just a little notice that um, the Black History Month is, always, is almost coming to an end, but there is still some activities going on this week. So the Black History Month, there will be a celebration and a reception at the Cornette Justice and Administration Building. That will be tomorrow on February 25th from 7 to 9 p.m. There will be, um, it, the program actually will include performances and speakers um, who will take note and um, talk a little bit about the history of the Black History Month and all the important people that took part in its history. Also, refreshments will be provided, um, but registration is required, okay? So, because they want to make sure that they don't have more people than they can actually house um, in, the, in, the, in the building. So, you register at gcga.us slash Black History Month, okay? You go there and you can register. Any questions? Thank you. <laughs> Council Member Warner. Um, well, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out tonight. This is probably the biggest crowd we've had in a while. I want to thank the troop for uh, Troop 65 for being here. Y'all did one of the best flag ceremonies we've had since I've been back on the council, and I salute you for that. I, I, really, I really appreciate the fact that Todd did a good job making sure that everybody actually faced the flag. That seems to be a bar that 
we're having a tough time getting uh, jumping over with our folks sometimes. Um, I did want to point out one other bill that is before the state legislature that affects all of us, and that is HB 523. You may want to put that in your phone. That's HB 523. And what that is, is it will preempt the cities or counties or any, any lower form of government. Oh, wait, did I just call us? I'm sorry. We're not lower, lower forms of government. Um, no, no, not inferior either. Um, from being able to put any restrictions on short-term rental property, which is commonly called Airbnb or VRBO, which quite frankly, uh, is a business use of a residential house. Um, the city, a few months ago, passed an ordinance because uh, I work in the real estate industry, and one of the things that I do is work as a consultant, and I've seen the video footage of young ladies being taken in and out of short-term rental properties um, that are being used as brothels. And one of the biggest issues facing our communities is dealing with sex trafficking. And if the state makes it where we cannot restrict Airbnbs and VRBOs, short-term rentals, we, we, we're going to be at a very big disadvantage. Um, it, it's very minor changes that cost very little to stop this. And the state legislature needs to hear from you. And that is, they need to stop HB 523. So please reach out to your state senators, your state representatives, because again, they're trying to take control, not away from us, but taking control away from you of how your community will look and operate. So thank you very much. And again, that's HB 523. Please reach out to your representatives. Thank you. Councilwoman Linsky. I'd like to take a quick moment to recognize one of my ninth grade AP Human Geography students. Tristan Hardy, would you please stand up? This is an incredibly brilliant young man. And I'm sure he's so grateful that I called him out like this. <laughs> Every single time he, he talks and gets a little restless in my classroom, this is what, what payback is like right here. <laughs> Strangely satis satisfying. Keep standing. Okay, no, no. Thank you, Tristan. <laughs> this, the Snellville Youth Commission has a huge event coming up on Saturday. Um, unfortunately, we're going to try and draw some people from the Reagan, after you finish running the Reagan, or walking, whichever you prefer, please stop by South Gwinnett High School in the Commons. Um, the Youth Summit will be going on, and leadership and um, the youth initiative that's going to also involve a poverty simulation in conjunction with Emory University. So please come by South Gwinnett High School. 9 a.m. probably to 6 p.m. It's going to be a long day for me, but I'm trying not to think of it. <laughs> Council Member Schultz. Um, I just wanted to mention that, that the, um, the uh, bills that we talked about uh, um, opposing local building design standards, if you'll jot these down, they're House Bill 302 and Senate Bill 172. I think it's important that you have those numbers to refer to if you, hopefully, when you contact your state representative and state legislator. Um, it, March 7th is our March farmer's market in the parking lot, our monthly farmer's market. So keep that on your calendar, too. Our vendors greatly appreciate you coming and purchasing from them. It makes it worth their while to, to uh, be there. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem Emanuel. 
We had a cleanup on Oak Road this past Saturday. I want to thank Kurt and Gretchen for coming out and Butch. And if any of you have not participated, you're really missing. It's, it's really not a cleanup. It's a treasure hunt. Oh, yes. <laughs> we found. I got a dirty diaper. I know. <laughs> but we found a grill. Anybody with a Nissan, there's a grill in the dumpster back there. We found a grill, a bumper, a hubcap, assorted nuts, bolts, washers, a 10 millimeter socket. So you never know what you're going to find. I got a broken countertop too. Well, there you go. See, I mean, it's just something for everybody. <clears throat> so you might want to come out next time we have one on Oak Road. And this Saturday, we're going to clean the Reagan. After the run the Reagan, we're going to take to the highway and it'll be closed until 3 p.m. So we're going to start whenever the race gets over, probably be 1030, 1045. And uh, we invite you all to come out and find your treasure on Ronald Reagan. Thank you. And now the uh, mayor's report will be very short. Um, just ask all of you to keep my mom in your prayers. She's just been under the weather this whole week, and she's still just very weak. And so we're just trying to get her back to full strength. And um, so I'd appreciate a few prayers if you could throw them her way. And with that, I will close um, the mayor's report and open the floor to public comment. If anyone would like to address the council, please come up. Name and address. You got five minutes. Kathy Emanuel, 1313 Temple Johnson Road. This is going to be short. I think there's a lot of people who would like to contact their House representatives, their senators uh, about these House Bills 302 and Senate Bill, and may not have the information they need. Would it be possible for Brian or David or somebody, one of you, to go out and put the bill numbers and put the local reps and the local senators email addresses on let's say the city facebook and then people could share that facebook maybe we could get the word to spread a little bit i mean this is a critical bill i don't know about you guys but i don't want somebody building sorry junk next to my house so um and also guys remember you don't have to be 18 to talk to your senator or representative this is going to affect Snellville when you grow into it. So you may want to contact your representatives and tell them your thoughts too. But we need to get people really letting our senators and representatives know this is not what we want because it's a really crummy idea. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Manuel. Would anyone else like to address the council? Hello. <laughs> Good evening, uh, Mayor and the Council. My name is uh, Josie Cruz. I, I am a candidate for Georgia Congressional District Number no. Four, and I am running against the incumbent. Uh, one of my um, motive for why I'm here tonight is because I want to get to know um, all of you, and all of you too. <laughs> um, it's very exciting for me to be in meetings like this because I get to know what is the need for the city and, and the need for, for the citizens too. Uh, I agree with you guys, you need to decide what you're gonna do with your city and not letting other people and from above, you know what I mean, to decide what you guys want and how the appearance of, of, of the city should be and especially when it comes to the to the historical part, you know? We, I am coming from Venezuela, and, and one of the key points for why, why Venezuela is a mess today is because they start messing up with the history. So that is very, that is a, a, a important point on my point of view, that is very important to keep it floating, you know? It's important to keep history so we cannot repeat ourselves, our mistakes back again. So my name again is Josie Cruz, and I am, I am running for the Congressional District number four against Hank Johnson. So nice meeting all of you. If you have any question, uh, my campaign manager and me will be hanging around until the, the end of the meeting. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Ms. Cruz. Thank you. Would anyone else like to address the council? Seeing none, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor, raise your right hand. That is six in favor, none opposed. 
Thank you all for coming out tonight. Be careful going home.